Welcome back to Elden Ring The Ultimate Guide Part 24. Today it is Altus Plateau North. Now if this is the first time you've watched any of our guides, we recommend you watch the video linked in the description so you can kind of get a feel for things. Otherwise, if you've got any tips of your own, stick them in the pinned tips comment. But we are coming from that grace under the bridge and uh, we are heading towards windmills. But first of all, we're going to kill this scarab to get uh, protection of the air tree and I have no idea what that does. Uh, that one, I think, boosts your holy defense. It's like the more powerful version of the divine fortification, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong. Honestly, I've never used it. <laughs> now, I did know that that was a poison grease. I know I never blurted it out, but it is. So, there's, this is the main set of uh, houses and windmills, I suppose. So, the windmill village. And this is where most of this episode is going to... Or at least an amount of this episode, maybe not most of it, is going to kind of focus... Uh, but from this grace, there's a few items we want to pick up um, before moving on because they're kind of like slightly off the path, I guess, a little bit. I think there's a... I knew it was an arteria leaf. Yeah, that uh, was one of the ones that just sort of grows organically in the ground. Yeah, yeah. So there's a raw meat dumpling, and now we're just heading back to that the village that's just up the stairs. Thought I'd speed it up for your convenience. And... Um, and then on the cliff edge, we're going to come and get the... I know it's a, it's like a wacky hammer weapon of some sort, I'm sure. Celebrant skull. Yeah. Yeah. Partly it's bad. It is. It's really short and doesn't do a lot of damage. <laughs> Just Epic. don't use it. Why use this when great stars exist? Exactly. Which we are going to be getting at the end of this episode. So be very excited because uh, you're about to get the two best weapons in the game. So, Golden Rune 5 in that barn. There's a lot of bitches dancing. They're having a good time, so they're gonna, they'll are gonna they leave you alone for the most part. Don't need to worry about them too much. But you've also got a katana, so you can slice them apart pretty easily as well. Holy Proof Dried Liver. Now, that's, um, that's an item that you want to keep a hold of, because that is going to be very good against the last boss. So, don't use it until the last boss. Yeah, I was just going to make the joke. Congratulations, after picking that up, you've beaten the last boss <laughs> yeah. for free. Like, it's just that good. Yeah, kind of, actually. So we're picking up some Stormhawk feathers there. Probably not worth it, but as it is, you use them to craft better arrows. Um, and then I think I made a little bit of an error the first time. Yeah, there's like another item that, that I forgot to pick up down here. you got to make another loop around the building, I think. Yeah. yeah. Ah, we lightning grease. Never hurts to have a couple of grease in your back pocket. They're nice to just apply a buff. If you feel like you're going to be short on damage, or if an enemy's particularly weak to them, like, take the uh, finger creepers, the big hand enemies. Like, if you want an easier time versus them, just slap a fire grease on your weapon. It makes them easier to kill. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And there's an exalted fresh... Fresh? Exalted flesh, rather. Uh, on the edge of the roof. Now... This boss, up and coming, uh, a lot of people do seem to have trouble with. Um, now, that is a Millicent summon sign, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yes, so if you've done Millicent's quest correctly, her summon sign will be there for the boss. Obviously, we're not going to do that, because all that does is increase the boss's health, and um, we're going to be summoning Mimic tier. Uh, you might want to have uh, killed the, um, the enemies kind of walking up the hill, actually. But here we are, Godskin Apostle. You fight an amount of these uh, during the, the course of the game. Luckily, it can be bled, which means it can die. And uh, the Mimic tier is fantastic at taking some heat off our ass. Now, for this particular one, we're going to be using Blood Blade. And we're just... Because this is a technique that actually works uh, fantastically well now that we got Blood Blade in the last episode. Is spamming... Blood Blade spam is one of the best strategies in this game. It is fantastic. Uh, this is just one way of killing the Godskin Apostle. Honestly, just... Just hitting it is a good option. Um, but because it can be bled so easily and Blood Blade does really awesome damage, just having something to take... The boys would also be a really good option for this guy probably as well. Because, again, splitting the aggro five ways, you probably just get free reign to just fire Blood Blade into his ass constantly. And now we've rested at that bonfire. Millicent's back. So we're going to speak to her and exhaust dialogue. I do just want to say quickly... Regarding yeah. Millicent, um, if you gave her the Valkyrie's prosthesis, that's why her summon sign will appear. We picked that up in the Shaded Castle. 
Um, her summon sign will appear. You don't have to summon her together to move here, but you exhaust her dialogue in this location, and that is her quest done until after we have done Landell the Royal Capital. If you wanted the Millicent's Prosthesis Talisman, which gives you plus five dex and increased attack power with successive attacks, it does both, which is nice. If you wanted that, you could intentionally fail Millicent's quest and kill her here to get it. We don't recommend doing that, because then you miss out on finishing her quest and getting the other reward. Um, but it is an option you have. If you wanted that talisman desperately, you have a particular strategy in mind, something like that, this is where you would get that item, if you wanted it early. And now you know. So we're heading up the uh, southeast path towards Lindell, and uh, there's a bunch of trebuchets, which... Frankly, I cannot find the, the pattern for avoiding them, so uh, looks like you're just going to be getting hit and healing through it, because I don't know how to avoid it. <laughs> anyway though, once you get to the um, the outer wall of Lindell, we're not going to go into it yet, that's for a later part, but we are going to uh, do this encampment. So we've got a golden rune 9 there, and then there's another scarab coming up, which I do not know what one that is. Lightning slash, cool. Not as good as uh, Flame Slash or Flaming Strike. Um, like I mean, it okay. is still pretty good, though. It, yeah, it's okay. It does a big burst of lightning damage. It puts a temporary lightning buff on your weapon. It scales with dexterity. Not faith, dexterity. Um, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. Similarly to how Fire Infusion is better for strength-based weapons until you hit about 50-something strength. Same goes for lightning with dexterity. So lightning will outpace the damage of the sharp infusion until you hit that 50-something dexterity threshold. God, it's just full of knowledge, so you are. <laughs> that's, wh that's why you hired me. <laughs> I'm a walking so, wiki. <laughs> these guys here are the Lindell, uh, the Lindell equivalents of like the Redan soldiers and stuff like that. Uh, they can drop... Uh, Exactly what you'd expect. So they're full, they're full armor set. So we've got the great bow and the great arrows here, but they can drop. You know, they're full armor set. Uh, the helm, the armor, the gauntlets, the greaves, knight's great sword, the partisan. Oh, that's for the knight. Sorry. Uh, so helm, circle, the gauntlets and the greaves. They can drop the lord sworn straight sword, the war pick, the heavy crossbow, the lord sworn shield, or the brass shield, if they are wielding it. So they pretty much drop whatever weapon they're using, and they can drop the armor set. This also didn't kill me from memory. <laughs> Crazy. You tried to. You took a shitload of damage from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're back yeah. at the Windmill Village, and I think now we're going to take the opposite direction now. So instead of taking the left, we're going to take the right. Oh, never mind. We're taking the left again. Um, then there, there was also the, uh, some Lindell foot soldiers. They're in, the, they're in a similar pathway. Where they drop the gilded foot soldier cap. The leather, drape, the leather drape tabard, they can drop daggers, short swords, short spears, just basic shitty weapons that you don't really need to care about. Uh, so we're picking up a four-toed foul foot from uh, that carriage. However, something to uh, bear in mind, actually, is in the, uh, the, the windmill village, uh, those enemies are called celebrants. Now, they can drop the... So picking up a smith and stone here. And no, I think there's an enemy coming up that's uh, one of those kill it and it turns into something bigger. So I'll speak about the celebrants in a minute after we've dealt with this. Yeah, this one, like the other transforming enemies, starts out as something mundane. Um, except the one that's a lobster, for some reason. But this yeah. one starts out as just a regular uh, wandering noble. Kill it and it turns into a lion guardian. Um, yeah, this one... It's not going to be as easy to kill as some of the other ones we've encountered because you can't really cheese this one. You've just sort of got to fight it straight up. Um, as you can see, it's a bit of a camera demon. It'll yeah. constantly push you around. It's hard to keep track of where it is, but it doesn't have too much health. So just leveraging bleed and frostbite and repeatedly attacking it with a katana, you shouldn't have any trouble. And your reward, as with all the others, is a larval tier. Which admittedly is a good reward and is something that we're going to need by the end of this episode. So, if you really need one and you've not gotten any larval tears, go get one from that now, if you're following the guide. But if you're following the guide, you should have larval tears, so pass. 
so we're at a mass grave, we're going to be picking up some runes, and just quickly I'm going to speak about the celebrants. They can drop the festive hood, the blue festive hood, if they're wearing the blue one, festive garb, blue festive garb, if they're wearing that. They can drop the celebrant cleaver, the celebrant rib rake, or the celebrant sickle. Um, effectively, kind of like the Lindell guys, they drop the armor they're wearing, they drop the weapons that they're using. Uh, something to note about the celebrant's weapons, it's kind of a unique feature. Hitting enemies gives you runes. Oh. Um, gives you a smaller amount of runes. It's like the, uh, what is it, Needle of Eternal Agony in Demon Souls. Cool. That gives you runes on hit. It does exactly the same thing. So, so every time you hit enemies, you get some runes back. Now that we um, got another golden seed when we were heading up towards the trebuchets, or heading back... I think to begin, yeah, we got it on the way to the trebuchets. We now can upgrade our flask again. That's pretty cool. So now there's this kind of like upper part of Altus Plateau, I suppose we're we're at. Um, effectively, the uh, the perfumer's grotto and the the tunnel that's like connected to it. This is above both of those, so they're like underneath this area. Yeah, it's about right geographically. There's a few interesting landmarks up here. There's another hero's grave. First one we've seen in a long while, actually. There's yeah, another uh, another hero's grave. There's a church, um, which I believe we'll be going to in short order. But on the way... Is it on the way? No. We'll be going to the church first, um, wherein I think there is a cookbook. And... So, so we get a sacred. There is a sacred tier here, so that's good. And um, yeah, there there is a. a night oh no, it's well. a spell, I think. Dra Dragon bolt blessing. Yeah, that's actually pretty good. Um, it gives you effectively infinite poise. Light oh. weapons deflect off you. That's when you get quite hit, cool. When you're wearing it, it's pretty cool. Um, so it's actually good if you're fighting like NPC invaders and stuff. So now we've got Lightning Ram, which is a funny Ash of War that, uh, tur like, see the things that the goats are doing where they kind of roll into a ball and start Sonic the Hedgehogging at you? It lets you do that. And it is, from what I remember, it is better than you'd think it would be. <laughs> yeah, it does a surprisingly large amount of damage. <laughs> so are we doing the dragon now? No, no, no. I think, so we're going to run up here, grab the items on this area, then warp back, then do the dragon. I think that's what we do. Yeah, I think there's a painting reward up here. Uh, yes, there, there is, there is. It's what we, it's the from the painting we picked up in the shaded castle in that part. The heart bow. But um, now we're gonna head back to the Grace in order to prepare for fighting Lanisax, which is the big dragon. Now the cool thing is, is that actually the stuff that we have at our disposal is actually pretty good at fighting this fucking thing. We can be dealing a ton of damage to its face by hitting it with Bloody Slash. Um, and you're about to see the chunks that we do to this thing are is really kind of incredible. Now, the thing is, is that the the Elder Dragon style uh, bosses are actually... They're, they're harder to hit than they look like they should be. And the fact that we don't have access to uh, Black... Do we have access to Black Flame Tornado currently? Um, we just got access to it, actually. Yeah. yeah we, we got the Godskin Peeler from the Godskin Apostle in the Windmill Village, and that comes with Black Flame Tornado as its Ash of War as standard. So, this is what I would suggest to do against the dragon. However, an alternative method is to put on the Godskin Peeler or take the, um, the Ash of War off it and then just spam um, Bla uh, Black Flame Tornado under this thing. But... This strategy is what we're going to do is we're going to use um, Chilling Mist to get it Frostbitten, which means it takes extra damage. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use Bloody Slash on its face, and this deals chunks to this thing. Now, the cool thing is, you know, you're not going to hit it, like, every time. It's not a guaranteed hit. But when you hit it, look at that damage. And it just you just swing a giant arc at its face... It's got great tracking. Fantastic. It is very good. I do oh. want to make a small correction. That was a chunk and a half. Um, a small correction to something you just said. Um, oh, the default Ash of War on the Peeler is the 
a Black Flame Tornado. You don't get Black Flame Tornado from it. You get that as oh. its own Ash of War significantly later, so if you did want to use BFT on it now, you would have to use the Peeler to do that. Okay, well, if you have the stats to use the Godskin Peeler and thus Black Flame Tornado, then by all means do that. And then for that, we get Lanisak's Grave, which is a spell. A Glaive, rather. Yeah, it's an incantation. You hold the big blade of lightning, swipe it along the ground, and it projects little waves of uh, red lightning, so the ancient dragon lightning towards your enemies. Um, covers a big arc, uh, hits reasonably hard. It's just quite slow, so I wouldn't use it personally, but you might find some use for it. So we just passed another skeleton there, one of the few in the game that can drop the Executioner's Great Axe. So that's pretty cool. Um... If you want some uh, footage of us using the Black Flame Tornado uh, against a Lanisax style enemy just to kind of see what it is that we do, you can go to the Faramazula episode and in like the first two or three minutes uh, we do that to the, the dragon that flies down there. So you can have a look at that to see what that looks like if you're so inclined. But otherwise, um, you know, we just run off the side of the cliff, landed on the Spirit Spring so we didn't die, and then just grab some items and then came all the way back around to the uh, the Grace, where we're going to reset our build. And it was very easy to to get prepared for Lannis Axe there. It was literally putting on Chilling Mist, putting on Bloody Slash, and that was kind of all you had to do. Popping some souls to get uh, to get more leveled up. And um, we, wa we wanted to be just enough to level up and then have no runes for going into this Hero's Grave. So, now we're about to do something really funny. We summon the boys for the Black Knife Assassin, and then we just, um, let them get to it, because, uh... <laughs> Here they go. Let the boys do their thing. Look at them go! <laughs> Come on. Come on. Here we go. Oh, I can't wait. I've, I, I've spoken about it so much. I, I love the boys. They're just my favorite. Look at them gang up. They just... They just don't care. They simply do not care. She can't hurt them. No, look at him go. Might, it might look like um, the Black Knife Assassin is like kind of doing okay against them, but just you need to wait until they position just right, and they seem to do it every time, and they'll just they'll just end up just banging the shit over. Yeah, they just bully certain bosses, and Black Knife Assassins are kind of one of them. This one is a little tougher than some of the other ones, but once she's uh, like locked into position, they can just bully her. Um, it's like CC locking. Like you just <laughs> you you giving her so many status effects that she just can't do anything about it. Eventually, um, what ends up happening though is that the boys do seem to just fuck this thing's AI quite badly. So now they manage to kind of like lock her. And like, like, surround her and lock her in a position. Uh, effectively, so I will say the other footage was funnier. Um, I just couldn't be arsed waiting for them to, like, gang up and bully her. So that's why I just uh, finished it off. But, yeah, the boy's pretty good against the Black Knife Assassin because, it again, splitting aggro five ways against things that are impervious to physical damage, essentially. Pretty good in actuality. Oh, yeah, for sure. Your reward for killing that Black Knife Assassin, or letting the boys kill that Black Knife Assassin, is the Black Knife weapon. And that's the first weapon you get with access to the Destined Death status effect. So if you have the stats for it, and it's not hard to achieve that, you can use its Ash of War, which is a projectile, and it inflicts the Destined Death status effect on enemies, which will take out a big chunk of their HP and then continue draining their HP for a while. So it gives you pretty much a 10% advantage versus every boss you fight. It's very, very powerful and a useful tool to have in your back pocket if you're struggling with a particular boss. Yeah, absolutely. You can just use it to like knock off like just a certain percentage of a boss's health and it's just dead one hit. So it's pretty cool like that. Now, what we've done there is we cast heal uh, because heal will um, kill these revenant enemies. But also that was like many revenants that we've done it next to. So it killed both of them. And it's a big surrounding uh, area of effect. So heal is uh, pretty much probably like the second most useful spell in the entire game. Because honestly, fuck fighting revenants. 
So, uh, this is us just uh, running through this hero's grave. We hit that illusory wall and then we're just running here. Now, we're just bolting straight past these enemies because we can't actually fight them because they're like this shadow version. We need to bait them into the light before we can actually damage them. That's, that's the gimmick with these things. Yeah, the nice thing is once they enter that ring for the first time, they get stunned. So it gives you a big window of opportunity to just finish them off. Yeah, yeah, it does do that. Quite handy. Aye. So pick As with all the other heroes' graves. Yeah, I was just going to say there's a bunch of grave glove wall in these. Um, occasionally you get ghost glove wall as well, which is nice. Um, they're your second main source for that, as outside of the catacomb dungeons. So, avoid, so you, I mean, you don't need to do this, but you can run around and get the Lindell Soldier's Ashes and then smash the floor. Eventually this does, you You have to do, to do this whole thing, you have to look back up to the, the, the broken floor, but you can just grab the Ashes in it. So when it comes to the Imps, as we've said before, they can drop the, uh, the Fort Hatchet, they can drop the, uh, the Fort Greatsword, at least I think that's what it's called, yep. They can drop their heads, so that's the imp head, the cat, the, so the, the cat, the fang, the long tongue, the wolf variants. And then they can drop uh, smoldering butterflies, glintstone fireflies, fogger blooms, mushrooms and smitten stones. There are two other imp heads as well. There's the elder and corpse heads. Oh, but this is those true. are picked up in specific locations. They're not ones you can get to drop from the... Uh, from the imps. So try and avoid being grabbed by these incredibly irritating enemies. Honestly, enemies where their only purpose is to do a grab are just the worst. But yeah, we can use the the fallen blades to as they're rising back up to get up to this platform, which I, th I thought that was a, an interesting... I thought that was kind of cool. I mean, it's very, very gamey. If you know what I mean, like it doesn't really look like you... Like you couldn't do that in real life, you know? But, um, otherwise, we're just, uh, like, there's, there's kind of no enemies that are really going to be an issue for us at this point in the game. We're kind of, we're doing pretty well for ourselves, power-wise. So, grabbing the dragon, sh the dragon crest shield talisman plus one. Um, I don't think it's good enough, realistically, to start wearing the dragon crest talismans. But we do, by the end of the game, put on the, the plus four version of that talisman because it does add up at that point. Yeah, the the talisman in question is the Dragon Crest Great Shield talisman. Yes. And the defensive buff it provides in PvE is absolutely worth the talisman slot. It can make some of the harder hitting physical damage dealing um, bosses a lot less threatening and therefore less intimidating, therefore easier to kill. So avoiding these enemies, grabbing the glaive, the glaive glove wart. I'm just calling it the glaive glove wart now. I don't care. <laughs> and now we're uh, heading up this ladder. Um, and this is like a kind of like a little secret bit that we've not been at. This this hero's grave is actually fairly um, involved. But yeah, Re a revenant shows up, so we're just going to spam heal. Uh, fuck ever fighting these things. I know we we don't fight them even once in this guide. It's just not <laughs> worth it. I will say, a, actually, a root resin, I guess. I will say, on the topic of, uh, actually, before I do, so this enemy is the the key to open the door to the boss. Yes. You grab all the items in its room, lead it outside, lead it off the ledge, and to any of those rings of light, we're going to lead it to the one that is in the uh, room that had all the imps in it. Should be following you at this point, but I will say, on the topic of using heal against the revenants, um, I mentioned in a previous part, I think we were in Ray Lucaria, that your cast speed is dictated by your dexterity. If you can achieve the 70 dex or 70 virtual dexterity required to have maximum cast speed, the heal will chain into itself perfectly with the Revenant. There is no window where it can dash backwards out of the AoE. Cool, cool. So that was uh, just one of the, um, what are they called, Champion Wardens or something like that? Grave Champion? Grave Warden Duelist. That, yeah. So 
Easy peasy enemy. Ground slam, ground slam, and it's dead. Left, right, good night. <laughs> and then speaking uh, of good night, that I know our <laughs> future corpse just got bodied. <laughs> uh, in in the room where the grave warden duelist was, we also picked up a prattling pate. Which is just an item that delivers a little, uh, a little vocal line, I suppose. I think that one was yes. called "Let's Go Get It." Oh, I just uh, missed let's it. Get to oh, it I think. Let's get to it. That's it. Yeah. It's a, last... it's a noisy piece boss? of clay that you breathe into. This uh... boss is a sh one of the shadows, but something else as well. Red wolf. Is it? Is a no, red wolf? Red wolf oh. and Gelmir. Oh, we're both wrong. Yeah, Red Wolf and Gelmir. <laughs> I don't remember so, which hero's grave we were in. <laughs> we're fighting an ancient hero as a Moor, and this thing can be bled, this thing can be ground slammed, so that means this thing is fucking dead. Uh, we're just, like, these things are also, like, super easy, so you... We should have obviously taken our Physic Flask, used Golden Vow before coming in here, but you know what? It's just, it's just not even that necessary. I mean, look, you just stood there fanning it about with the getting left D-pad button for like a solid 10, 15 seconds there, and it didn't even attack you, so... Yeah. It just goes to show how threatening this boss actually is, in that it isn't. <laughs> so we got Ancient Dragon Knight Kristoff. That's actually one of the slightly better of the named summons. So that's cool, I suppose. Yeah, he's similar to the Great Shield Soldiers in that he's more of a tank summon than yeah. DPS. He's like um, the he has a big old Yeah, kind of. He has a big old Great Shield, he tanks damage. Um but he doesn't have Lutel's teleport or her projectile. He just has more no. health and defense. So we are now uh heading back to Altus Plateau, uh at the Broken Great Bridge. And now we are heading northwards. Time is properly north, and there's this bit of the map is pretty barren, but we're getting very close to getting the great stars. You should all be very excited. I know I am, because the great stars is fucking awesome. So I uh, to seeing something that isn't a katana. Yeah. So we picked up the nobles' traveling garb and a navy hood, um, as well as the twin knight swords, twin blade. Um, oh, cool. The Twin Knight Sword is the uh, Strength Twin Blade, and the regular Twin Blade is the Dex Twin Blade. Now, here's a Battle Mage, and you might be wondering why we've gone out of our way to kill this one enemy specifically, and that's because, for some reason, yeah. this one drops its full armor set. Yep. I, so they, I they still go. can't fathom that. <laughs> it's so random. It's just there. He's just fucking there. Just chilling. If he was in Leonia, it would have made sense. But why is he here? <laughs> Fuck him. Well, anyway, now we're at Gold Mask. So uh, we haven't spoken to Gold Mask yet, but we have spoken to Corrin. So now we've uh, now we spoke to Gold Mask. We need to go back to Corrin uh, in the Altus Plateau. Then we speak to him, and then I think effectively we tell him where Gold Mask is, and then he goes and finds him, and then we need to go back to them. Yeah, See, this, much. this is what I don't like about the Elden Ring quests. You just this this pattern of movement just would never really happen in natural gameplay. No, it's very much busy work. It's go here, talk to them, go back, talk to this person, go back to the first location, talk to them again. It's yeah, it's just a long way to do not a lot. But here oh. we're going to use the sending gate I mentioned in the previous part. Nice. Um, that takes us to the end of the bridge that has gold mask on it so you could have come and done this there and then progressed gold mask's quest in the part where we killed the worm face last part but we're doing it now instead so now we're going to speak to corin ask about gold mask just the usual just exhaust all the dialogue options until there's nothing else to say and they're repeating themselves gold mask's ending by the way is objectively the best ending in the game so you should pick it um I mean, wrong, it's madness, but well... We're... Nah. Gold mask. God well, is I mean... wrong, refuses to elaborate further, literally dies. Dies. <laughs> <laughs> so, heading to the uh, westmost uh, windmill, I think I think here is just the giant's, the giant rat. 
like the rat summon, right? Yeah. Interestingly, yeah, the giant rats are unique as on. well. Go on. Go on. No, you I was go. Gonna say, it could be upgraded for free. Uh, all you need is a material. It doesn't cost you any souls. Yeah, it's really cool. And there's another treasury noble. Noble yes. treasure. Um, dropping another rune. Once killed, it will drop the rune. If you kill it again, it won't. So you can't farm them. But is this where we make the dash for it? Yep. Yes. This carriage contains one of the best weapons in the game, and it's also unique because you don't have to stop this carriage to steal the thing out of the back of it. You can just jump to it, pick it up, and then run away. We're done here. Fuck fighting so... all those enemies. Fuck stopping the carriage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Particularly that one as well. The lineup of enemies is fucking horrendous. But also, it's just so weird that that one random carriage lets you, like, ride it whilst it's moving. So yeah, we're heading even further west to pick up gravel seat stones. I'm sure you were chomping at the bit for more gravel stones. I know I wanted more gravel stones, but yeah, there we got some. That's awesome. That's really epic. Uh, now we're heading even further west. I think this is the last item we're going to pick up before doing Vary's quest, I think. Uh, pass. No, I think I think we go to the runes. The, the runes first. So there's a like golden rune four. At this little rally that's happening, whatever the fuck. That was a Lindell uh, soldier, and then surrounded by a bunch of Lindell foot soldiers. I've already went over their drops, but yeah, that's all those what all those enemies are. And this is the Writhe Blood Ruins. Um, clues in the name: lots of enemies here that can inflict bleed, primarily dogs. So. Uh... Watch out for those. At one point, these dogs were the scariest enemy in the game because they had an attack that dealt something like 17,000 damage a hit. <laughs> yeah. um, but this boss, uh, not really going to be an issue. This is the first time we've... Oh, no. Second time we've seen one of these, the Sanguine Nobles. There was also one in the church by Vari. Um, but this, I think, will be the first one we fought. They really aren't that difficult. No, as well, you can see. Uh, literally nothing... Almost nothing in the game is difficult when you can just do this. Um, yeah, no, 100%. The, the, the strategy is you can see what we're doing, you know? But for that, we get the Bloody Helis, which is, a, I think it's a great rapier, but it inflicts bleed, right? It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's a heavy thrusting sword. It has the Dynast's Finesse Ash of War, which is very, very good. This attack that it was doing just there, the deadliest attack in the game in early patches. Um, yeah, it has so Dynastus Finesse. We... It gives you a dodge and a heavy stab with a follow-up with another couple of stabs. It's really, really good. It inflicts good bleed. It's got very long reach. Uh, generally, an amazing weapon. So, we need to mention this. We are doing the invasion at Rive Blood Ruins, and it's this guy. He also has another great stars, and you might be thinking, well, uh, I've came here, and the sign isn't here. You have to have activated Vare's quest first for this to show up. Yeah, yeah. But as with every other NPC, this is just going to be ground slam it until it dies. Um, Bosh, he's dead, nice and, and your reward is the second to great stars. So if the great stars is the best weapon in the game, then Great Stars 2 is the second best weapon in the game. And yeah, we like have if, both of them. if porn's so good, why didn't they invent porn 2? But in this in this <laughs> case, they actually invented Great Stars 2, if you can believe it. Now, you might be thinking, why specifically is 2 Great Stars good? Well, we should probably mention why this weapon is so good. Right, one, it can it's pretty low-statted. It can inflict bleed. Uh, you have two of them. And then you get that means you get to do the, the the hammer jump attack, which is like jump in L1, where you'll just hit them with both bonks. So we're heading back to Vari. We get the uh, I think it was Lord of Blood's favor. Yeah, and, correct. Um, now we're going straight back to the Church of Inhibition that we've already been to, and basically he wants you to like bloody this little rag or whatever. Um, there's various ways of doing it. I actually literally can't remember the other ways of doing it because the only way that makes sense is to just get the free one that doesn't affect your game from that the the dead bird on the fucking chair, right? So the other the other methods are convoluted and irrelevant. That's how we do it, okay? Um I, I will mention them. There is sure. one in the precipice of an anticipation. The first dead maiden that you pick the first item in the game up, um, off of. You can take it to her. You can also kill 
Irina if you haven't done her quest on the Weeping Peninsula and soak it in Irina's blood as well. But obviously we're doing Irina's quest and thankfully there is a way of doing this without fucking up Irina's quest. Uh, so yeah, it's quite good. So for doing that, you'll be given the bloody finger and he will also give you the, um, the Pure Blood Knight's medal. Now, using this in your inventory will teleport you to Moog's palace. So that's quite cool. Effectively, it actually becomes uh, like a homeward bone, like in the other Souls games, where if you're in a pinch, you can just spam that and teleport to uh, Moog's palace, and then from there you can teleport to anywhere you want to go. So it's, it's just kind of funny how technically that does sort of work like a homeward bone if you're willing to sit through two loading screens. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I think we're just going to upgrade the Great Stars now. Um, more on why the Great Stars are amazing. They're light. They have low stats. They inflict bleed. They deal really good posture damage. Um, power Stance in them, as you've said, gives you access to the Power Stance Great Hammer moveset, which is very, very good. Um, they're relatively long. Um, they're good one-handed. They're good Power Stanced. They're good two-handed. They can accept all the best ashes of war. They really are just an excellent option all around. There's there's very few gaps the Great Stars don't fill. So I guess we're just upgrading the rats because why not? However, you also missed out the cherry on top for the Great Stars. Oh yeah? The Great Stars, given everything we've said, would still be the best weapon in the game. So again, using the rest of us. Because we, we burnt all our soul packets and upgraded the Great Stars as much as we possibly could. Uh... <laughs> So, yeah, you do that, and then we're going to go to um, Renala, and then we're going to respec our stats to be able to use the Great Stars. Effectively, we're just sacrificing an amount of our Vigor in order to have the exact same stats, but just using the minimum stats for the Great Stars. So that's same Endurance, same Faith, same Arcane, but then we go to 20 Strength, or oh, 22 Strength, rather, and 15 Dex. But because our Strength is, what, 10 more, it means we actually have to go to 44 Vigor. So, we're just going to be dumping back into Vigor until we get to 60 at this point. That is the plan. But, when it comes to the Great Stars, each Great Star gives you 1% of your max HP back per hit. So, that means if we have two of them, and we're using the L1 Power Stance moveset, we get 2% of our HP back per hit. And I think that is just very sexy. And okay, there we go. That's all the North done. Join us in part 25, where we're going to be doing Mount Gelmir Lore. Now, other than liking and subscribing, you can follow us on Twitter, you can also follow us on Twitch, where we will be streaming once the DLC is out. And if you're feeling especially generous, you can sling us some cash on Patreon if you're so inclined. But the best thing you can do is just comment anything. Just comment anything! Go on. Anything. Two seconds. Go on. Anyway, catch you in the next part.